In this video, we're going to cover serializing code. And serializing code is the idea in Racket where you can write a valid Racket uh, piece of code surrounded in a special uh, keyword, and that will convert that code into a data structure. Uh, these will be nested lists. Uh, so since we've learned lists, now this is a good example uh, where we could use the quoting or serialization uh, functionality of Racket to manipulate lists that actually represent the source code of our programs. So it's a way to exercise uh, syntax. So in Racket there's this function called quote or a special keyword act really and when you whatever you put inside of it in terms of rac valid Racket code will be uh, serialized as a basically a nested list or a list with other lists nested inside and there will be a representation of your code. Notice that uh, this is a special keyword because whatever you put inside quote is not evaluated so it's not executed or computed in any way. So now I will show you examples of serialization. So, if we write, uh, maybe I can uh, just open up, actually let me start with this example and then we'll go back. So I use uh, the terms quoting and serialization uh, interchangeably in this video. So now what I want to do is quote serialization, not track it. I paste this. Okay. So now let's look at what we have. So we do racket, serialization, and everything passes. And now I'm going to explain what's going on. So I write, for instance, quote, and if I put any number, the representation of a literal is the literal itself. So if I write the number three, I will see three. You know, as if I do. Let me just show you quote of 10 shows you 10, right? But if I do 10 plus one, I will see quote plus 10 one. So what is happening here? Uh, it's basically this test right here. So what is happening here is that quote again, does not evaluate whatever you give it, it just gives the representation to whatever code you gave it. So what is this representation? Well, it's the same as writing a list of plus 10 and one. So notice that I wrote, let me write this, quote of plus. Okay, notice that it's exactly the same thing. So what is quote of plus? Well, quote of plus is, um, if x is a, you know, it's an identifier, like plus is an identifier, then what we return is a symbol. Okay, and the symbol we've seen before is just a special string in Racket um, that is used only for, well, th these cases, really. So if I were to write quote of a string, foo, oops, write this down, okay, then I would get foo back because foo is a primitive, okay? But if I write quote foo, what I get is the quote foo, whoops. I get the quote foo, okay? Fair enough, so we've seen examples of, of um, check equal, so this is the same as writing. But a string, the quoted string is the string itself, and the quote, The quote of foo of an identifier is the same as writing the identifier and, and prefixing it with a quote. 
Okay, and then finally you can write uh, just a lambda if you want. You can write a lambda, you could write, uh, for instance, you can write, um, whereas if you write define, you'll get an error, right? Because define is a special keyword. But if I write it inside quote, now, because it's not evaluated, then it's valid. And what you see is the quote define. Okay, so this is an example quote. Okay, so this, this is a bunch of examples. So now let's go back and kind of go through what the slides are saying. So what we're saying is that an, any variable or identifier becomes a symbol and then a function application just becomes a list where every element is quoted recursively or serialized. Uh, and if we serialize a define, what we'll have is a list where the first element is, is a quote quote define and then quote of that x and then quote of the result e. Similarly with the lambda, right? You will see if I were to write um, in this example, I quoted out lambda x. What that shows up is a list. The first element is a lambda. And then inside you have another list which contains a quoted x. And then the return is a simple symbol. Again, with the conditional, everything is very, because the syntax of record is so close to uh, the data structure, the serialization of the code is very trivial, as I hope you will expect. It won't be very surprising. So now, what I would like you to try to do by yourselves is try to think of what would be the result of quoting each of these. And actually the quote, the code, there are some test cases that are s very similar or the answer to these uh, questions. So then I ask, can we serialize a syntactically invalid record program? So what does that mean? Let's say I were to write, um, like if I write lambda and I write x, and here by mistake I write y, where y is not defined, right? If I were to write this, I would get unbounded and defy. The question is, what would happen if I quote this? If I were to quote this. Do you think we'll get an error or not? Maybe pause the video and ask yourself that. Okay, I hope you pause the video. Um, and the answer is, remember that the quote inside quote of the, of the serialization is not interpreted or executed in any way. So it doesn't matter if you have undefined variables. So as long as it's syntactically, as long as syntactically it makes sense, that is to say there are no, like if I were to write this with an open parenthesis, then that would be an error, right? You get an in, um, it end of, it, it requires all the parentheses to be balanced. So that is what it means for it, for the code to be syntactically valid. But it may be s semantically invalid because in this case the Y is not defined and you only know that by running the code and quote does not run code so therefore serialization is unaffected by semantic errors but it is affected by syntactic errors and this is what the question is asking so if the a program is valid syn invalid syntactically then serialization will not work but if the program is only invalid when you run it then that's fine it works perfectly fine for instance, you can even write things like a lambda like this, because it has no notion of what that the code of whatever text you write. It just understands lists and symbols and numbers and whatever and primitives basically, or sorry, literals. Uh, and finally, we have this example. I ask you to play. Basically, in the homework, what you'll be asked to do is the reverse. So, given a quoted term, how do you get, for instance? Uh, this element and this element. How do you check that something is a lambda? How do you check that something is a define? That's what I ask you in the homework assignment. Okay, I hope you had fun.